In many of our RealPars videos, we discuss control system and instrumentation devices in great detail, so you can understand exactly how they work. In this video, we will learn how to read a P and ID, which is something that engineers encounter on a daily basis. At RealPars, we love helping you learn. So if you enjoy this video as much as we enjoyed making it, click the like button. Subscribe and click the bell, and you'll receive notifications of new RealPars videos. So you'll never miss another one. PNIDs, or piping and instrumentation diagrams to give them their full name, are schematic representations of pipelines, equipment, instrumentation, and control systems found in process environments such as oil refineries, chemical plants, paper mills, and cement plants, etc. The symbols contained in PNIDs represent the equipment in the process, such as actuators, sensors, and controllers. Process equipment such as valves, instruments, and pipelines are identified by codes and symbols. As well as devices and pipelines, a PNID will commonly contain information on vents, drains, and sampling lines, as well as flow directions, control I.O., and interconnection references. The instrumentation codes listed in PNIDs follow a standard format. After some practice in reading PNIDs, you will know these codes by heart. But in the meantime, there are many resources on the web where you can download these tables for reference. The first letter of the code identifies the parameters that are being controlled or monitored. For example, flow, temperature, level, or pressure. The next letter is used to define the type of control device being used. For example, transmitter, valve, or controller. The number refers to the logical numerator. For example, we may have a system with four temperature transmitters. It makes sense to identify these as TTO1, TTO2, TTO3, and TTO4. Let's consider for a moment an instrument on a PNID named FV01. Looking up the code for this, we could tell this is a flow valve numbered 01. Symbols, circles, and lines are used to represent instruments and to show how they are connected to the rest of the system. Now that we know our device, FV01, is represented by a circle, we can also tell from the PNID where the instrument or device is located. The presence or absence of a line in the circle determines the location of the physical device. The piping or connection lines on the PNID also tell us about the instrument. For example, a solid line would indicate the interconnection is via pipework, whereas a dotted line would indicate an electrical connection. It is worth familiarizing yourself with the different types of connection symbols, as this can give you an insight into the function of an instrument even before you know its code. In this video, we have looked at the basic interpretation of a PNID, or piping and instrumentation diagram. We learned that each instrument involved in the process appears on the PNID and is represented by a symbol and a code. We also learned that using this code and symbol, we can understand what type of device it is, its location, and how it is connected to the rest of the process. To read a PNID effectively, one must be familiar with standard instrument symbols and standard identification letter codes. We hope you enjoyed this short video on reading PNIDs. Here at RealPars, our team of experts is on hand to answer your questions and respond to your feedback. If you'd like to learn more about any of the topics covered in this video, head over to our website at realpars.com. We'd love to hear your suggestions for topics you want our team to cover. Also, be sure to download the RealPars app. When you download the app, 
you'll be able to watch an entire free course on PLC hardware. Just like this video, the lessons are all high quality and also very easy to follow. By downloading the RealPars app, you have access to a wealth of practical knowledge as an automation engineer right in your pocket. And you'll also receive new fresh out of the oven videos each and every week.